So we just went through the patch notes, had our one. And well, there's a lot of stuff in here. And I'm trying to like summarize it the best I can with what I just learned in the last three hours, going through this and starting to theory craft some builds. I have like started making a lightning storm planner, a meteor fireball planner here. There's like some double swing stuff. Um, there's a lot of kind of cool stuff in there and a lot of balance changes that they haven't really like detailed so much. So if you want to like read that on all of the patch notes, we have to link in the description. So go check it out. But the TLDR is um, every class gets some new uniques. Uh, one really interesting one is uh, actually a cross-class item, which is the Pain Gorgeous Gauntlet that can potentially buff uh, basic skill builds like a lot. So this is going to be a very interesting item to play around with with some of the existing uh, basic skill builds, I think. For example, for um, Arclash or Stormclaw, depending on the exact mechanics, but it allows you to like spread your basic skill damage to all targets uh, on the screen, basically. That sounds pretty wild if that works the way I think it does. Does it make other basic skill builds viable? Maybe, some, somewhat, we'll see. But for the most part, it buffs the existing uh, basic skill builds. There's also a new aspect here that goes with that. 80% extra damage for basic skills. That seems pretty crazy. So I think something like Arclash and Stormclaw could definitely be up there. Now, there's like some uber unique item updates. Melted Heart and Stardust are actually good now. Especially the ring is crazy. It gives you 40% extra damage and resource cost reduction now with this effect. And it doesn't fall off anymore all the time. And Melted Heart has been reworked. So it's not like a permanent like invincibility shield. But... 25% uh, of the incoming damage still goes through, but it has much better stats. This is also going to be a very strong item for many builds. Now, there have been some nerfs, and um, to sum this up, basically Overpower went down a little bit, but it also went up again a little bit because they buffed um, life. So it seems like we're going to have a lot of life in next season because there is a patch note about um, maximum life percent bonuses now scaling with other affixes that it didn't scale with previously. And the way this worked was that uh, maximum life bonuses as a percent didn't scale with the flat bonuses. So they were just like flat added at the end of the calculation instead of before so that you can multiply them. So this might mean we, we might run around with like 50k, 70k alive or something like that. Kind of bringing back most of this power of overpower again. But we'll see if that is actually true. Um, outside of that, there have also been uh, nerfs and bug fixes, like um, like some general stuff and some class-specific stuff. So one thing you need to know is uh, Poison Shred is dead completely, so that is gone. Uh, ball Lightning is going way down, but you don't know exactly how much. I expect it's going to be like Season 1 levels, so it's going to be pretty decent, but not like ridiculous. Um, uh, Hoda got actually not really nerfed all too much, it seems to me. So they fixed the bug with the 30% extra damage here from Violent Hammer of the Ancients. But outside of this and, you know, some other tweaks to Barbarians, uh, actually it got hit quite little, I gotta say. So I'm kind of surprised about this one. However, it can't prepare those one-shot bonks for Duriel anymore and just like, you know, instantly destroy him when he comes out. Because all of those aspects that are required for this, like an uh, expectant aspect or... Uh, like limitless rage aspect and these kind of things, they have a timer of five seconds now. So I can't prepare it before the fight and then walk in and one shot them. But if you do it during the fight, you can still do some pretty major bonks. Uh, then we have um, also some other stuff here for the rogue. Uh, most importantly, Twisting Blades got um, a pretty heavy nerf for the, the poison imbuement variants. So this has been a bug ever since the game came out and uh, even before that, I guess. So the way this worked is that. Um, Poison Impugment gives you the full damage value with Twisting Blades with the spinning uh, blades from Blade Dancer. So instead of like only doing like 15 or 10% of the damage, it did 100%. And that three times. So there was also another bug that they fixed now, which made the deal of damage three times instead of two times like the spin actually indicates. What this means in practice is Poison TB is going to go down something like to half damage, a bit less than that actually. But the physical and like you know any other variant of testing blades is actually better now because they actually buff the blade dancer aspect a little bit. At least for like the melee play styles, it's gonna be better now because the spinning blades deal more damage. But yeah, overall rogues are definitely going way down. Not just because of this, but also some other nerfs that came in there. So I'm gonna uh, go through the initial class changes here with everything included. Starting with the barb, so they have a bunch of cool new stuff actually, including rend. 
So rent is gonna look really good, I think. So there is a new aspect that, um, uh, no, actually a, a unique item here, Ring of the Ravenous. We don't know the stats, but uh, it's gonna apply a rent when you hit enemies with a broadening skill like charge or leap or even kick. And like this, you can kind of like passively bleed everything up as you go through the dungeon. I think that could be really cool with the really fun speed farming builds. There is an upheaval aspect now that gives you an overpower. Seems okay, nothing crazy. Uh, charge got a mega buff of 900% damage, but they mega nerf the aspects that go with it. So you don't have like, you know, this plus 300% damage aspect anymore. Veterans Brawler, I think it's called. But instead, it's like a pretty strong base skill. I think especially early on, uh, in a like you know, leveling experience, this is going to be really good to like one shot elites, one shot bosses. It's also much more usable now because you get this cooldown reduction in effect all the time. You don't have to actually uh, knock enemies in the terrain, so you can have very short cooldown on charge with very high damage output without any investment. Really, I think it's going to be a staple in many bar builds, especially in leveling builds, but maybe even later on. So, this looks really powerful. Um, some other small buffs and, and changes here, um, it's like Brute Force, for example, overpowers tweaked down a little bit. Walking Arsenal got a buff, you get uh, slightly more damage in slightly longer duration and also 20% attack speed. That's going to make it feel pretty smooth. So Kratos Barb, login. Um, you have Unconstrained buff, also really powerful. You get up to 100% extra Berserking damage bonus here. So that will make Unconstrained probably the most used key passive for anything that's not like really late game i believe because you don't have to pay this extra cost of unbridled fury but you get a relatively comparable damage boost especially combined with wrath of the berserker gushing wounds is a bit buffed but i don't really trust it um they changed the shout meta a little bit so they talked about us in the campfire uh, martial glyph now reduces the cooldown of non-shout skills by four seconds instead of other shout skills i think that is actually a really cool change and Still gonna keep a shout meta like viable, but it's not like you have to rely on a triple shout active at the same time all the time. But instead, you're gonna probably like try to cycle them a little bit. Like, for example, you charge in, you do a shout, you charge again, do another shout, and so on. So, I think you're gonna see more of these kind of play styles even in builds that have multiple shouts. Also, they made it easier to just go with like one or two shouts, for example, by changing Echoing Fury, so it doesn't have to stack shouts anymore. Uh, here's some of these changes I talked about with the five seconds timer on the limitless rage, expectant. A bunch of these aspects have been changed to a five seconds timer now. So be aware of that if you want to do the one shot Duriel stuff or one shot Lilith stuff. Encroaching Wrath got tuned down a little bit, but not a big deal. But yeah, this is it for the bar basically. Then we have the Druid. So there is the new unique glove that has been previewed already on the live stream. I think we have that here somewhere. Uh, it looks like this here. It's a Lightning Storm glove that uh, has really good stats and an insanely good effect. So Lightning Storm is going to be uh, very good for Druids, I think. And um, yeah, there is um, yeah, this item now that just kind of carries it. I'm not exactly sure what kind of setup you're going to play there, but yeah, some probably Tempest Raw, Werewolf stuff that is going to pop off here really hard. And Lightning Storm is already really good for leveling a Druid as well. Then there is some Rabies buff here, mostly as a utility effect. Uh, you can, like, you know, get the poison benefits up from heightened malice, for example, or in Venom. Uh, this is a relatively decent new aspect here for Druids, I think, for builds that don't have easy access to poison otherwise. Otherwise, there are some small buffs to Rabies and Lacerate and Cataclysm. All of it is pretty useless, I think. Uh, some other small buffs here, some passes. I think this is also not really uh, noteworthy. Same for the Spirit Boons, the only exception here being um, the stack. Uh, with the 20 uh, spirit, so instead of 10, you get 20 now. I think that's a pretty viable option for some builds. And Avian Raft is actually a pretty strong change here. So it went from additive to multiplicative crit damage now. So this is probably going to be picked by pretty much every single build on Druid, I guess. So this is an overall pretty nice buff to the class. Then we have so a few Paragon changes here, nothing really crazy. <laughs> Companions were buffed to 120% on the cliff. Wow, they're still going to remain in FT, I guess. Uh, Blurred Beast, I talked about. This is completely dead now, I think. So it's still going to be somewhat useful for like a farming build, I guess. But when it comes to like this insane double dipping on poison, that is just gone now. It doesn't exist anymore. So you see here that it doesn't do the poison damage anymore. So you just have to poison enemies, but it doesn't matter how much. And it can't really benefit from a higher value anymore. Small buff to Boulder. 
a small buff here, a small nerf to retaliation. Yeah, that is basically it for the druids. Then we have the Necromancer. There is a new unique for Bloodlands that looks very interesting. So it says you are Bloodlands and then you can also fortify yourself whenever the Bloodlands would deal damage to you. And it gives you extra damage for Bloodlands. I think Bloodlands is already a relatively decent build and with a bit of extra juice it's going to be really good. So very much looking forward to that one. I enjoyed Bloodlands a lot when I played it already in the past. And depending on the stats, this is going to be a very good item, I think, because it just allows you to just get more lances out, have a bigger multiplier on your lances. It just makes the entire playstyle much smoother and kind of get started in a large pool. Then we have a new aspect here. That one is absolutely ridiculous, I think. It's for the Bone Spirit. We already knew that there are some Bone Spirit stonks in this patch, but this is even crazier than that. Uh, so first they showed us a buffed aspect that gives you tons of extra crit, uh, which is down here. The um, Swelling Curse aspect gives you now 25 crit and some maximum essence for each enemy hit for your Bone Spirits. And then you have this, where after you cast a Bone Spirit, you also get 18 Bone Spinners basically going in all directions and you deal a massive amount of damage. And you get a ton of essence back as well. So this sounds like it's going to be absolutely destroying like large packs. And you have the damage to also one-shot bosses with Bone Spirit. So I think that's going to be really cool. And Necros have something to look forward to here. And potentially this could combine with this new uh, legend, uh, unique love here, the Pain Gorgeous Gauntlets with the basic skills. So that might actually synergize and make this completely busted. So I'm very much looking forward to that. But let's see. Uh, then we have um, a few other like small little changes here. For example, Decompose got some heavy buffs. Uh, you can spawn a lot more uh, corpses now and stuff like that. Corpse Explosion though got hit pretty hard. They increased the damage of the like instant Corpse Explosion quite a lot, but they nerfed the Blighted Corpse Explosion, both in damage and in a lucky hit. This was an insane source of lucky hit for like huge flesh, for example, or other procs. And now it's still really good. It's still a very powerful like hit effect, but you're going to notice a difference for sure. You're going to get weightless corpses with Blighted Corpse Explosion and these kind of things. Uh, some small buffs here. Blight is up a little bit. Sever is up a little bit. I think those builds are going to feel pretty decent. Uh, Bone Spirit also buffed again here. Uh, you also get more Essence back now. So lots of stuff here for Bone Spirit. Um, they buffed uh, Blood Mist a little bit here. You get 10% crit chance after Blood Mist ends. I think this is a pretty nice effect. You can like you know walk into a boss room, press the button, and you have your Unstoppable buff from Tearbot's Will. You have this crit buff. There can be some you know combos like this now, I guess. Bone Prison, you can walk through them now. They also made it so that um, yeah, they swapped like, two of these effects around. And then we have yeah, some golem buffs down here. So golems, uh, they're going to have like all AOE damage now. Uh, they're also going to like reset the golem powers a lot easier with the hulking aspect, which is here. So there might be some synergies now with golems, potentially making it into some builds. I can definitely see that happening, but we'll have to see like how valuable they are actually as like um, like offensive option, like how, how much damage they actually deal. But there are definitely some improvements here. Maybe it's going to be good enough. Yeah, then we have um, yeah a few other like uh, aspect changes. I'm not sure exactly what to make of this one, the Torturous Aspect, giving you um, Iron Maiden as a darkness skill that deals shadow damage. There are some slight synergies that are found here, but I'm not really sure about this. I think this, this, this doesn't seem, really seem like very exciting to me at the first glance at least. Maybe I'm missing something. And uh, we also have... Um, yeah, here this decompose aspect here that was buffed with the extra corpses. Also, one interesting thing here is the card leader legendary paragon node for your minions. I don't think this is exactly enough to make minions like super viable, but there is definitely some potential here because now your minions deal extra damage depending on how much attack speed bonus they have. And you can actually stack that up quite a lot to like 300% or something with some aspects, including the Army of the Dead aspect. So Army of the Dead can like massively buff your minions now, if you put that on a two-handed weapon, it gives them plus 100% damage from this and plus 200% attack speed. So it's actually going to be like some pretty insane nuke damage that you can produce there. But we'll see how good exactly. Then we have the rogue. I gotta say for rogues, it doesn't look all that great, although they look extremely fun. So they have gotten the poison TB nerf, as I mentioned. So one of the strongest builds has gone down quite a bit. The Tibbot's Will bug is gone as well, so I should mention that. I mean, that was obvious, I guess. 
And they also nerfed close quarters combat. So the main key passive of season two that everyone was using is uh, heavily nerfed from 40% scaling to 10, but they increased the attack speed a little bit at least to compensate. However, we also have some other interesting changes here. Precision is actually usable now. So it's uh, basically with enough crit chance, you can get a really nice, smooth three to one rotation with combo points, with puncture or with, you know, um, forceful arrow or any of those other like um, range abilities and you like three combo points get your six precision stacks and at six stacks you have the maximum and then your next core or ultimate skill consumes it so no longer uh, do you have to worry about the puncture consuming your precision stacks for example the passive actually works now and it gets a juicy 50 percent damage buff and that can be a further increase of extra crit damage and there's also a juicy buff to the Sky Hunter bow that goes with this that I think is going to be actually a useful, unique bow for rogues. So that's going to be quite fun. And ranged rogues in general is going to be the theme here for this season, I think. They buff penetrating shot a lot. You have extra crit chance, extra damage. Uh, I think pen shot is going to pop off really hard because now it deals experience damage for every enemy it hits and not for any enemy it pierces, which... I think makes it work with the aspect for it. For example, where you have these, these side arrows going in all directions. So that is going to be pretty wild. Rapid fire, really good single target. Mirage, kind of like the, the you know, in middle ground between everything. So uh, quite excited to play range work personally. And um, there's also a really cool new aspect here. This is a resistant assailant aspect. So there's a defensive one that gives uh, you 10% res and maximum res for four seconds when you break concealment. And then when you kill an elite, you get minus 10 seconds on your concealment cooldown. Now, this is actually what makes you the most excited about Rogue this season, because there is some synergy here with uh, something they added in season two, which we have here. So there is uh, the Night Stalker glyph, I think it's called. Probably no one ever used that, but it gives you minus four seconds on your shadow imbuement cooldown when you enter stealth. So like this, you can reset your stealth all the time, enter stealth, get the cooldown reset on your night, on your uh, shadow imbuement, and kind of have almost like a barber season one play style again, I think. So that is gonna be really cool, I think, for especially speed farming builds when you go really fast, uh, constantly re-killing elites, constantly resetting your concealment. This is definitely something I wanna try out as like a speed farming variant here. There's also a new unique here for the rogues. There's the beast fall boots. I'm not exactly sure what to make of this, it is basically like, you know, consume all your energy for one big hit kind of item after you cast an ultimate skill. So this has the best synergy with Death Trap and Exposure, for example, but then you also have to like include combo points and it, it seems kind of like a bit out of place. We'll see what the stats are on this and what you can make out of it. For now, it's like a bit of a wild card, I think. Yeah, some other small buffs in here, like, you know, some of the... Um, Generator skills, nothing really crazy. Kaltos is a bit buffed, so it's a bit better than before as like a utility skill or they can just throw into a pack. Uh, Rain of Arrows has a sh shorter cast time, so it's going to feel smoother. That's going to be nice. Cold Imbuement scaling is much better. So Cold Imbuement in general is much more usable now. For example, they also allow you to freeze with non-crits now and with a higher chance. So Cold Imbuement is pretty solid as long as you don't like boss damage. Uh, Poison Imbuement also got another change here with um, the mixed poison imbuement that was relatively bad most of the time and that allows you now to get more consistent poison imbuements up and play like a non-crit poison build uh, compared to like the blended poison imbuement for example i think that's a pretty good change and it's gonna feel pretty good to play like a bursting venoms kind of like you know full poison rogue if you want to do that uh, down here there's also a few passive improvements chilling weight gives you chill, chill effect now concussive gives you crit damage against everything now Overall, I gotta say that the rogue changes are definitely a nerf with the T-Bots will dropping out with the poison TB. And even though some of the stuff looks really exciting, like the precision, it is pretty powerful. The buffs to penetrating shot are pretty good and so on. But I think rogue will generally like not feel as powerful as some of the other classes, especially the barb. So we'll see. Some other small changes down here. So Lairaga's instinct got a bit of a buff here, so it can now like, deal a bit more damage with the next three core skills. Uh, the momentum aspect has gotten much better. This is really powerful now if you want to play momentum. But if you do that, you're probably lacking damage even more. So we'll see if this is actually going to be useful. And these alchemist aspects, they now work with only shadow imbuement and you don't have to actually, you know, 
apply some of these effects like chill or poison to the target previously to get them. That makes them much more usable, and I'm actually quite excited to try them out. Now, for the unique bows, I uh, mentioned Sky Hunter. That one is really good now. Uh, it basically synergizes with the position perf passive perfectly, gives you lots of extra crit damage, lots of good stats on this thing, and the effect gives you like a you know, it's guaranteed crit with extra crit damage. You gain energy. Pretty good stuff. I think that's going to be used in range builds quite a lot. Reinforce remains a meme, and Eaglehorn, I'm not really sure what to think about it. it almost seems like a nerf to me. And finally, here's the Zork. So we have the new Starfall Coronet. So this is a uh, new Meteor item that I've also previewed on stream already and looks like this. It has also extremely good stats, uh, ranks to Meteor included, and gives you extra Meteors, but this time on a cooldown. So your Meteor becomes a cooldown skill, so you might want to combine it with another skill. For example, here I started field crafting a Meteor Fireball combo, but I guess pure Meteor builds are also possible with this, depending on how much you want to lean into it. So that looks pretty strong, and I'm expecting great things here. So I think that that is also one of the things I'm most excited for, to be honest. Then we have a new aspect that is really good for anything that needs boss damage, I think. An Ice Blades aspect uh, gives you basically permanent vulnerable on the boss and extra damage against vulnerable targets. So um, any anyone that struggles with boss damage, and especially fire builds that want to, for example, proc the Tarasha Ring, want to use that, I think. Uh, so that's going to be pretty nice. Uh, ball lightning, I mentioned, is going to go way down. We don't know exactly how much because it was vague in the patch notes. But this here alone brings it down to, I think, 40% of its previous damage value. And then there's going to be another nerf of something like down to a third or something, I imagine. So it's going to go down like 80, 85, 90% damage or so. But that was expected. Lightning spear now applies vulnerable on a crit. That's kind of cool. Some other small things here. Uh, Searing Heat also like some small buff and some bug fix. Um, also here, Elemental Summoner got buffed a little bit. I'm not really sure if this is enough, to be honest, for like a Hydra build or something, but, but it does help a little bit, I guess, to make Conjuration a little more desirable. And I also buffed Burning builds a little bit with Burning Instinct, now scanning much harder. Also, another improvement here is the Shattered Stars. So that goes with the Meteor, uh, new item here. So all of the Meteors that come down now are based on the actual main meteor's damage so you see here 30 percent of the casted meteor so instead of this little like flat damage value that was not very impressive we're gonna have an actual scaling mechanism here so i think meteor is gonna blast on the sorg and you know some other stuff is still gonna be quite up there blizzard in particular but i even believe with the nerfs ball lightning is gonna remain pretty juicy yeah then we have uh, uh some unique buffs here stuff of lam Esen. Uh, I played Charge Balls in Season 2, I was not impressed by this item, and I'm still not. And Ice Heart Brace, uh, same story, basically. Now, for some generic game changes, uh, there are some buffs to item power in this patch. So, they are increasing how high the item power rolls uh, as a minimum value at certain uh, ranges. So, there are some examples here in Nightmare Dungeons. Uh, at level 100, now you have, for example, an 845 to 925 legendary item power range. Uh, this is monster level 100, not tier 100, by the way. And rares are now 810 to 925. And it scales much faster. So you see this here, monster levels 125, which is tier 71, Nightmare Dungeons. Um, they're going to already roll minimum legendaries of 910 and rares of 885. So it's very easy to get like 925 or near 925 loot. And starting at tier 90 Nightmare Dungeons, everything is going to be guaranteed 925. So there's one less thing to look at when you're looking at items. I think that's pretty good to just like sort out loot a bit more easier and just gear up a bit faster. So that was pretty good change in my opinion. And it's going to just make tier 90 the main target. You don't actually have to go to tier 100 now. You just have the glyphs. Tier 90 is totally fine for that. You get all your gear there. Easy peasy. So that is a really good change here. Um, some other like small changes. Um, I'm not going to go through like, every single detail here. Uh, what you need to know is maybe for world bosses, they have been nerfed a little bit. So you don't get like this insanely high item power items anymore, but still pretty good. You see here plus 65 to minimum, plus 25 to maximum, instead of plus 100, plus 100. So you don't go into world tier 4 and do a world boss and have your instant 925 weapon anymore, but it's still worth it. And uh, for example, they also added the chance for these world boss caches to drop uniques now. So when you go there, you log in on your character once a week or something, 
you might get lucky and get some really cool drop that is like you know a build defining item and you might want to swap it up a little bit yeah. other than that there's a lot of like other small things here just to reiterate a little bit wsd movement is coming uh there's tooltip improvements event timers on the world map um some other stuff here like console players can now trade gold actually so that's kind of cool we get an extra stash tab and then we also have this uh, skill tree uh, like respec mode now doesn't work for paragons yet i guess but that is also going to be a bit helpful to like just like swap around the stuff only built yeah i think that pretty much covers most of the stuff that is in here there are obviously a lot more details that are left out now this is a very long document so again i suggest you're going to read up on it yourself if you want to see all of the information but i think we have pretty much everything in here and now as a as a bit of a summary i guess for how it's going to look for a season three so we have uh, pretty much the same farming meta when it comes to like how to get uber uniques durial is still a thing the hell tides are still a thing so yeah hell tides are going to be more you know frequent and they have been buffed during season two that's all nice but if you want to get the best gear you still have to do that uh, there's going to be the vaults uh, we don't know how much you have to farm them to beef up your companion but i guess quite a lot so at least that gives something else to do on the way but overall we're going to gear up much easier and i think the balance between the classes is much better that being said though this is the current season two tier list here but looking at this we're definitely going to see a lot of barb at the top again i think i think barbs are going to be clearly the best class in this season again uh even though hoda got nerfed and overpower got nerfed and all that but barbs just have so much good stuff now and rent is coming in there the charge stuff is coming in there all of the you know key passes got buffed like the walking arsenal stuff so barbs in general are gonna like probably dominate s tier here uh, stuff like the ball lightning stalk, for example, is going down for sure to yeah, maybe A, maybe B or something, I guess. Uh, I guess stuff like Infinimus is going down as well because of the corpse explosion nerfs. Uh, I think all of this here is going down, like the, the rogue stuff, because of the close quarter combat nerfs. And uh, it's just rogue is just weaker in general. So rogue is going to be like the A tier class, like the, the balanced class of this game now. I mean, it was usually like the most balanced, but it has become even more balanced because they nerfed the top stuff and slightly brought up some of the bottom stuff i guess so rogue is mostly like a and b and with all of these builds and there are going to be some good builds for other classes so i think lightning storm is probably moving up here polarized maybe down tornado might stay there i don't know bone spear is probably going to be good bone spirit might be really good or even a combo between that so this is kind of like my expectations here for like some of the top uh, like s and a tier stuff uh, i think blizzard will probably stay here this as well Meteor is going to probably come in here somewhere in S or A, I think. And yeah, for the most part, here on the bottom, a, a few things move up a little bit. Like, for example, Sever has been buffed, you know, Boulder has been buffed. So we'll see where exactly everything will land. But for now, I think Barb is up here. And then you have, like, I don't know, uh, probably like some of the top builds at least, like, you know, maybe the Bone Spirit, maybe the Meteor, maybe, you know, stuff like that. Lightning Storm, a little bit behind that in general. And then you have like a little bit behind that, like Rogue in general. And then probably like some of the weaker builds of the other classes below that. So this is how I would roughly rank things right now, at least. But we'll see. And we also have the maximum meetings uh, tomorrow, for example, uh, talking about all the stuff that we learned and that we think about the new season that we fear crafted. So stay tuned for some of those updates. We're going to be updating all of our build guides, of course. Uh, of course, we're going to have an updated tier list here as well. All the stuff. Uh, but it needs some time. We literally just got the patch notes, so please bear with us. But the plan is we're going to go through everything here, make it season 3 ready for you guys to enjoy. So that's the summary of the patch notes. I hope you enjoyed this, and, uh, well, wish us luck. <laughs> and I'll see you guys next time.